I can't believe I have to make this video, but there are people on this app that are misleading people, so I have to. There's a group of people on this app that actually believe that in 70 AD, everything was fulfilled. And now we live in the new heaven and earth, which is insane to even think about. Because if that was even true, why would the world be like it is right now? But if you studied the early church fathers' works, then you would see that they were still looking for Jesus' return. So if it happened in 70 AD, then they missed it somehow? These people are called preterists, and they believe that all the end time events were spiritual, which really is just a Gnostic view. Many of these people pervert the gospel and deny a future bodily resurrection of the saints. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 13, Paul says, For if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised either. He also stated that we're going to have imperishable bodies once Christ appears. So to think otherwise distorts the gospel of hope to believers. Paul also says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. But avoid irrelevant babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Hermanius and Philetus, who have swerved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. They are upsetting the faith of some. So Paul already warned us that these people would come and say that this resurrection had already happened, but it hasn't. Their theory is flawed in so many ways, but I'm going to give you a couple more examples. Acts 24 verse 15 says, Having a hope in God, which these men themselves accept, and there will be a resurrection of both the just and the unjust. The preterist view only talks about the just being resurrected. So their view contradicts what Acts says in that verse. Matthew chapter 22 verse 29 says, But Jesus answered them, You are wrong because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. Christ charged the ones who denied the resurrection of the body as ignorant. The Bible talks about a final day of judgment. Preterists limit this to the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. But the devastation of 70 AD only happened to the Jews and only affected them. But in Acts 17, it says, Because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. But in Matthew chapter 12, verse 41, we see the men of Nineveh will also be there. And they clearly weren't there in 70 AD. When Paul defended his case in front of the Roman governor Felix of the judgment to come, Felix was terrified. Acts chapter 24, verse 25. And as he reasoned about righteousness and self-control and the coming judgment, Felix was alarmed and said, Go away for the present. When I get an opportunity, I will summon you. Why would a Roman be afraid of an impending destruction of Judaism when he's on the winning side? According to the preterist view, the end of the world is just limited to the Jewish world, not the entire world, which occurred in 70 AD. But this view is simply not viable if you read the Bible See, we as believers have a responsibility of the Great Commission, which is to teach and immerse lost souls. So if the end of the world occurred in 70 AD, then the Lord's Commission is no longer valid, which is absolutely absurd. Also, Jesus talked about the parable of the tares, where in the end of the world, the tares, the evil ones, would be removed from the kingdom and burned. Did that transpire with the destruction of 70 AD? No! If you read the Old Testament, then you can see clearly that Jesus' first coming was literal, and so will his second coming be as well. The New Testament reveals the fulfillment of this prophecy, and it clarifies our hope in Jesus and for his appearing for his church, as well as our hope for all eternity. Christ did not leave his church without a hope-filled vision of the future for the past 2,000 years. Much of the biblical prophecy awaits a future fulfillment. I hope this opens some of y'all's eyes and keeps you in hopes for a future appearance of our Lord and Savior because he's coming soon for his church.